in 19th century Philadelphia, a man was standing on the corner of like 8th and Market claiming that he was eating glass. And for a nickel, you could step inside of his tent and watch him eat glass. Well, he was really eating clear toy candies. I'm Ryan Burley. Uh, my brother Eric and I own and operate the Franklin Fountain, and shortly we'll be reopening Shane Confectionery. It's been a family-owned candy store since 1911. Wow. Clear toy candies were, were brought over uh, by the Germans in the 18th century. They were sugar toys, essentially pure sugar, generally gifted to children at the holiday seasons. That's a 1920s Vulcan gas candy stove. It came out of an old candy kitchen. These are old clear toy candy making pots. Using the old equipment is part of the tradition. They're handmade pots. Davina is pouring a batch of red clear toy candy. We have over 300 molds in these old um, library drawers that we got at an auction house. You have to be really careful when you're pulling them out of the molds. They have some small parts that can easily break off. The idea is they're sort of like sculptures, and so you want them clear and retaining their uh, fine detail. Farm animals, there's some cows, horses and chickens. There's a, a boy on a, on a penny farthing bicycle, beautiful mold of a fireman carrying a baby out of a burning building. I think it's my favorite mold. Carrying these old traditions on is part of us identifying ourselves as Americans. This is an American tradition uh, that we can feel good about and pass on to our, our children and grandchildren.